Alright, so method two. We're going to look at the same exact problems from before, so you have all the answers and one way to do it. But with the second method, what happens? We want to add in the numerator and the denominator. So we want to combine everything up top, combine everything down below, then divide if we can. So in that little box, method two, we want to add or subtract to get a single rational expression in the numerator and in the denominator. Then divide, simplify if possible. So looking at that first example, we've seen it before, but we're going to do it in a different way, simplifying this. So what is my least common denominator of the top? Of my numerator, what is the LCD between 2 and 4? Four? 4. And let's talk about the bottom. LCD of the bottom. Between 6 and 8, what is our least common denominator there? So it might not be as obvious what it is for the denominator, so we can break it down if we need. 3 and 2 gives us 6, and 8 is 3 factors of 2. So I know it's going to have to be divisible by 8. What are we missing from our 6 term? Factor of 3. So our LCD down there is going to be 24. So up top, we need to build those common denominators, build the common denominators down here. So my LCD up top is 4. To turn 2 into 4, what do we need to multiply by? Factor of 2. And whatever we do to the bottom, we have to do to the top. That one already has our LCD, so we can leave him. And down below, to turn 6 into 24, what do we have to multiply by? 4. Whatever we do to the bottom, we have to do to the top. And what factor are we missing to turn 8 into 24? Factor of 3. So it's a little bit more work to do this route. But the same concept, we'll still get down to the same results. So equivalently now, what is my numerator term going to turn into? 2 fourths plus 3 fourths. Since we have common denominators there, we could combine them, and we will in the next step. And let's simplify down below each of those terms. I'm looking at 20 over 24, coming from the first, and negative 9 over 24. So we can combine the top two fractions and the bottom two fractions, since we have common denominators. And what are we looking at? 5 fourths all over 20 minus 9, and give us 11, all over 24. And now, when I have a fraction divided by a fraction, what do we do? Keep the top one and multiply by what? the reciprocal of the bottom. So flipping it upside down. And we can simplify. How many times does 4 go into 24? 6. So I've got 6 times 5 gives me 30 up top, 11 down below. Same result that we had before, but a little bit more work to do this method. Sometimes it has advantages. This case was definitely not one of them. But let's look at another. We've seen this one again. Same exact problem. What is the LCD of the top? Between x and 2x, our LCD is 2x. And what about down below? LCD of the bottom. So I need a factor of x. They already share that in common. And what else? 4 times 3 gives me 12. So what do we have to multiply our first term by to get us to 2x? Factor of 2. We're already there with our second term in the numerator. Down below, what do we need to multiply 3 by to get us to 12? Factor of 4. And what do we need to multiply 4 by to get us to 12? Factor of 3. So our equivalent expression, what's coming out of there? Up top, I've got 6 over 2x plus 1 over 2x. Common denominators, we can combine them. And down below, 4 over 12x minus 9 over 12x. Common denominators. 
So let's combine them. Up top, I have 7 over 2x. Down below, 9 minus 4, we've got a negative 5 over 12x. And again, when we have a fraction divided by a fraction, what do we do? Keep the top, multiply by the reciprocal of the bottom. Flipping it upside down. And we can simplify right now. I've got an x up top and an x down below, so those will be gone. And 2 goes into 12 six times. So what are we left with up top? 4 to 2, and down below, negative 5. Same answer that we had before, but we got it with a different method. Great, last one for us to do together. Looking at the top, what is my LCD of the numerator? X. What is my LCD of the denominator? x squared. So what do I need to multiply 1 over 1 by to get an x down there? x over x. And we already have that common denominator over here, or the least common denominator over there. What do I need to multiply 1 by to get me 2x squared? x squared, whatever I do to the bottom have to do to the top. So it's coming out of here. Got x over x minus 1 over x. Common denominators, sweet. In the bottom, I've got x squared over x squared minus 1 over x squared. Again, common denominators. So let's simplify. Up top, what are we looking at? I've got x minus 1 all over x. And down below, I've got x squared minus 1 over x squared. When I have a fraction divided by a fraction, what happens? Keep the first one, multiply by the reciprocal of the second. x squared minus 1. And we need to factor that so we can cancel out common terms. So the first one is already factored, x squared is fine, and down below, what is this binomial? A difference of squares, x plus 1, x minus 1. So what can we cancel out? x minus 1 with x minus 1. And I've got two factors of x up top, one down below. So I'll be left with 1 living up there, all over x plus 1. We get the same thing as before? Yeah, a little bit different way to get there. So go ahead and take those last two. Try to use that second method to simplify these complex rational equations, expressions. So up top, what was your LCD between these two fractions? Six. And down below your LCD between those two, two x. So what do I need to multiply 2 by to get me to 6? Factor of 3. And what do we need over here? Factor of 2 to turn 3 into 6. To turn x into 2x, we need 2. And to turn 2 into 2x, we're missing x. So what do we have up top? 3x over 6 plus 4x over 6. Got common denominators. Sweet. Down below, 2 over 2x minus x squared over 2x. Now that we've got common denominators up top, we can combine them. We've got 4 factors of x and 3 factor, factors of x. So I've got 7 all together. And down below, 2 minus x squared all over 2x. And again, when I have a fraction divided by a fraction, what happens? Keep the first one the same, but multiply by the reciprocal of the second. Flipping it upside down. So what are we left with here? Can we simplify a little bit? Yeah. 2 goes into 6 how many times? 3. Is there anything else that we can cancel? No. 
So when we multiply straight across the top, what do I have? 7x times x gives me 7x squared. And down below, I've got 3 times this entire quantity, 2 minus x squared. Did we get the same as before? Yes. Different way of looking at it. Very last example, again, was similar to like we've done together. And what is our LCD of the numerator? X. And the LCD of the denominator? X squared. So to turn 1 into x, what do we need to multiply by? x over x. And down here, what do we need? Factor of x squared. So we've got our common denominators. Start simplifying a little bit. I'm left with x over x plus 1 over x. And in the denominator, x squared divided by x squared minus 1 over x squared. Now that we have those common denominators, let's combine. Up top, we're looking at x plus 1 over x, and down below, x squared minus 1, all over x squared. Fraction divided by a fraction. We keep the top one the same and multiply by the reciprocal of the second. Flipping her upside down. And we need to factor to be able to see what cancels. So the first term is already done. x squared is fine. And what does this binomial break into? x plus 1 and x minus 1. So in this case, what can cancel? Got one factor in the top and in the bottom of x plus 1. And I've got two x's up here, one down below. So we'll be left with one living up top. And what else down below? x minus 1. Got the same as before. So whichever method you're most comfortable with, I kind of lead towards the first one because I feel like it gets the job done a lot faster. But if you like this method, work with that one.